Hey Mona, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Trying to figure out which charger to use for the Tesla and which one to use for the Leaf. Well, let's help you out. Electric cars are becoming more and more popular and it's clear to see that the future is electric. One of the biggest perceived hurdles of owning an electric car is knowing how and where to charge. So how do we charge an EV? Well, there's actually two ways to charge. You can either charge at home or you can charge at one of the public charging stations that are out there. In this part one of the two-part series, we will be talking about how to charge an electric vehicle at home as most EV owners do. It's very convenient and it's one of the biggest benefits of owning an EV is you can plug it in overnight at home and in the morning you're good to go with a full charge. However, there are some people that may not have access to a garage or a public parking spot, in which case they purely rely on the public charging network, which we'll cover in part two of this video series. So before we get into the nitty gritty of charging, we need to understand how an electric vehicle's efficiency is measured. So as most of you are aware, petrol cars measure their efficiency in either kilometers per liter or miles per gallon. EVs on the other hand use kilowatts per hour. Mm -hmm. so, an EV's efficiency is typically defined as kilowatt per hour per 100 kilometers. EV chargers can be classified into three charging levels and describe how quickly the charger will recharge your EV battery. These chargers are defined by the kilowatts they output. The higher the output, the faster your EV battery will recharge. So each kilowatt hour received by an average size EV equates to about six kilometers of real world driving range. First up are level 1 chargers. These are the slowest type of chargers and can directly plug into an 8 to 10 amp 3 pin wall outlet around your house. This is a trickle charge, which basically means if you plug your car in overnight, it will give you about 1.8 kilowatts of output per hour, which is basically 10 k's of range. Now, if you charge your car overnight for 8 hours using one of these wall outlets, it should give you about 80 kilometers of range, which is quite a lot for a lot of people. Now the time taken to fully charge your battery depends on the size of the battery inside your EV. So for instance, an EV with a 50 kilowatt hour battery will roughly take about 28 hours to charge at this speed if it was fully drained. So next up are level 2 chargers. Now, for level 1 charging stations, all you need to do is plug in your charger to a 3-pin wall outlet. However, a level 2 charging station requires installation from an electrician. So how do you know what charging station you should get installed? So this comes down to one main consideration. How long does it take for your EV to get a full charge? Now, these are great for cars that have a larger battery and require a longer charging time or for those who want to get a full charge in a shorter span of time. So a level two charger can be configured in two different ways. You could either set it up as a single phase or a three phase setup. Now the term phase might be foreign to a lot of you, but it essentially refers to the distribution of electric load. So what is the difference between the two and why do you need to know this? The basic difference is residential homes are usually set up as a single phase power supply, whereas commercial and industrial facilities are set up as a three phase. So the charging speeds offered by a single phase setup will be plenty for majority of the EV owners out there. But if you do need the faster charging speed offered by a three phase system, you can get your electrician to convert your residential power supply to a three phase setup. So how fast does your car really charge under a single phase system? Well, a level two single phase charger typically delivers either 16 amp or 32 amps of currents, which means it outputs between 3.7 and 7.4 kilowatts of power output. So this translates to roughly 22 kilometers of range per hour with a 16 amp output and about 44 kilometers per hour with a 32 amp output. So coming back to our example from earlier, an EV with a 50 kilowatt hour battery will roughly charge in about 14 hours when using a 16 amp plug or in less than 7 hours when using a 32 amp charger. Now we come to the three phase. Now for most people, a single phase setup will be more than enough. But if you do travel long distances every day and require an even faster charge, the three phase setup might work better for you. Just like single phase, three phase level two charging can also be set up at 16 to 32 amps of current, which gives about 11 kilowatts to 22 kilowatts of power. Now to easily differentiate this in my head, I imagine a single wire carrying current in a single phase and three wires carrying 16 or 32 amps of current each in the three phase. So hypothetically, an EV with a 50 kilowatt hour battery can be fully charged in less than five hours when using a three phase 16 amp setup or in less than two and a half hours when using a 32 amp setup. Now, 
He has mentioned timings assume a constant charge rate all the way to 100%. But with these faster charging speeds, in reality you don't actually get that as the charging curve continuously slows down. So what you're saying is, if say my car was charged to 90%, the rest of the 10% to get it to 100%, it would charge at a slower rate? Yep, that's exactly what I mean. And there's also this thing called the inversion loss. Say what now? <laughs> well, inversion loss in basic terms means when you're charging from an AC power point, mm -hmm. when that electricity gets converted to DC for your battery, you lose about 10% of that output. Right. So using this example, let's say you've got an 11 kilowatt hour charger. Mm -hmm. So in four hours, technically you should receive 44 kilowatts, yep. but in reality, you might actually only receive around 40 kilowatts. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Lastly, we come to the DC fast chargers, also known as the rapid chargers. Now these are essentially the chargers found outside as a part of your public charging network. These are designed to charge your car to 80% in just 20 to 40 minutes. So in the next video, we'll be actually covering these in detail. Awesome. Oh, finally, I now know how to charge my car or set up my charging station. I'm ready to charge. Um, no, not quite. Hold your horses. We still have one more thing to talk about, and that is, which plug do you use for your EV? Good point. All right, let's find out. So in this part of the world, we have four different connectors for charging your EV. Two of them relate to the level one and level two charging, which we'll be talking about in this video, and two are for the DC fast charging, which we'll be covering in the next video. So once you know which EV plug applies to your EV, you can forget about the rest. The first type of connector is the Type 1, which looks like this and is mainly used in cars manufactured in Asia or America. Now these connectors are designed for charging from single phase, which recapping from earlier, supports power levels of up to 7.4 kilowatts or 32 amps. Popular cars that use the Type 1 plug include Nissan Leaf, the BMW i3, Audi e3 e-tron and a few others. One of New Zealand's most popular EVs, the Nissan LEAF, uses this type of connector, so a lot of charging units have been installed. However, this type of connector is slowly being phased out to be replaced by the Type 2, which is now commonly found in the latest modern EVs that have come out in the past few years. So now let's move on to the Type 2 connector. This is what a Type 2 plug looks like and is now the preferred choice for most manufacturers in all the modern EVs coming out these days. Now this is actually a standard that's preferred for both home and commercial charging. So a Type 2 plug can typically offer you rates of up to 22 kilowatts per hour if the cable is a three-phase version. Now most commonly you will actually see only the single phase version of these cables which offer you a rate of 7.4 kilowatts per hour. Most common EVs to include this type of plug are any modern Teslas, the MG ZS EV, the Hyundai Kona, and almost all EVs being produced these days. Now that we're all experts in the type of EV chargers available, let's figure out the right charger for you and your EV. This usually comes down to two things, your EV's charge rate and your driving requirements. So the most important thing to consider here is your EV's maximum charging rate. Now a lot of plug-in hybrids and even some versions of the Nissan LEAF only have a 3.6 kilowatt onboard charger, which essentially means that even if you have a faster charger, their charging is restricted to that 3.6 kilowatt rate. So how do we figure out our EV's maximum charge rate? Well, what you can actually do is just Google the specific model of your EV and you'll find it in the car specifications. Or if not, you can actually find it in the car's user manual as well. Ah, good to know. Now, going back to our main point, these EVs with slower charging rates can still be connected to these faster chargers, but you just won't be able to utilize the full charging rate to its full potential. The same applies to a three-phase setup as well. If you do have a three-phase charger, you need to make sure that your EV supports these higher charging rates to decide if it's even worth making that switch to a three-phase setup. The second thing to consider would be your driving habits. This involves considering the average distance you travel each day and how often you'd be able to charge at home. If, for example, you drive longer distances more often, you'd want to consider a level two charging station for a faster charge. Now, when choosing the right charger, be sure to consider any future changes that you might have. Things such as transitioning from a plug-in hybrid to an all-electric car, or having multiple EVs, and even a change in your driving habits. Finally, we get to the different type of charger options available to us. There are four common options. The first, 
the 8 amp 3 pin level 1 portable charger. This is the cheapest way to get your charging journey started as there's no extra setup cost required. These chargers typically come included with the purchase of an EV. A level 1 charger may be the right choice for you if you have a short daily commute and the ability to charge 8 hours or more anywhere with a 3 pin or if you have a plug-in hybrid. If these criteria do not apply to you, a level 2 charger might be better for you. So let's now dive into some level 2 charging options that are out there. So if you want a faster charge but don't want to spend a lot, the cheapest way to get a level 2 charger is actually to get an electrician to install a 15 amp socket in your house. Now these look just like a normal 3 pin socket but carry a higher current, therefore reduce the charging times to be almost less than half compared to a standard 8 amp portable charger. You will just need to make sure that the portable charger of your EV is compatible to receive this 15 amp current. Some chargers like the one that we have here for our Tesla actually come with this 15 amp adapter in the box enabling you to charge at these higher speeds. For some other EVs you may actually have to buy a separate 15 amp compatible charger to support this higher charging. Next we come to the caravan plug also known as the Blue Commando. This can be the next best cost effective option to get installed. They come in a 16 amp and a 32 amp variety. The 16 amp plug charges at double the speed of a standard 3 pin plug, whereas the 32 amp charges 4 times as fast. The 16 amp option is definitely more commonly seen. When traveling or camping, most campgrounds seem to have these plugs, which means if you have a charger with this connector, you will be able to charge your EV at most of these sites. For our Tesla, all we had to do was buy this adapter which plugs in directly to our portable charger which allows us to charge with these plugs. But for some EV chargers, you can't use adapters. For those, you'll have to buy a separate charger with the caravan plug. Then we finally come to dedicated wall chargers. Now these cost the most to both purchase and get installed. But with these, you have the option of either setting them up as a single phase or a three phase system. The most common configuration is a single phase delivering 7.4 kilowatts of output which means that you can essentially charge your EV up to four times as fast when compared to a standard three pin wall charger. There are plenty of wall charger options available in the market with various different features and pricing ranging from somewhere around $900 with some selling for over $3,000. Now this doesn't even take into account the installation cost charged by your electrician which can vary depending upon your individual situations. Quite a lot of these chargers are Wi-Fi enabled which is really cool because they add some smart features like the ability to be controlled through a mobile phone app, set schedule charging or monitor your charging habits. Now a lot of these charges are available in public locations as well such as gyms, supermarkets and hotels. The workplaces are also making the move to add these charges to their workplaces so their employees can charge while they're at work. Once you've decided which charger is right for you, always get a certified electrician to carry out installations. This ensures that your house has appropriate wiring and the required circuit breakers in your switchboard. So how much does it actually cost to charge your electric vehicle at home? As most of you know that driving an electric vehicle is much cheaper compared to their petrol powered counterparts. Now, the cost of charging your EV is directly related to the electricity rate that your electricity provider charges. In New Zealand, the average electricity rate is around 29 cents per kilowatt hour. So let's use this and run some calculations. So using this example, an EV with a 50 kilowatt hour battery would roughly cost around $15 to fully charge up and give you about 300 kilometers of range. That's just 5 cents per kilometer. In fact, since majority of the EV owners charge their car overnight, if you utilize the off-peak hours offered by most energy providers, you can actually half this cost. So a big tip here to save some money is to ensure that you have these off-peak rates available to you and that you charge during these times. So that sums up how to charge your electric vehicle at home nicely. Stay tuned for part two of the series where we cover how to charge your electric vehicle using the public charging network and how you go about planning your road trips in an EV. So learning about charging your EV can be a little daunting at first, but hopefully this video helped answer some of your initial questions. If you have any other questions that we haven't answered, be sure to leave them in the comments box below and we'll get back to you. And if you liked the video, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe. It really does help us out and we'd love to continue sharing content with you guys. Let us know what you thought in the comments below and we'll see you guys next week. Stay, Stay charged! charged.